Oh, and they say, oh, something's wrong with your DNA. Let me take all the molecules in your DNA, all the information, and scramble it around. <laughs> Would you walk out of that hospital? No, you wouldn't. You'd be dead. But see, that is the most popular definition of information today. Coded systems with or without meaning. That is not logical. It might work in very few cases where we have things called encryption, but that's the only place it will work. It does not work in any biological systems and does not work in most technological systems. So that is not a universal definition. It is only works in very specific cases. So let's look at the characteristics of information. Now we're still building. I thought I saw someone blink out there. <coughs> Don't blink. We're still building. Let's look what information is now. Code. All information has a code. The English alphabet has a code. Hieroglyphics have a code. Computer co I put this last one in there for you computer people so I could see you salivating too. The word ASCII. <laughs> that just gets computer people excited when you say words like that. So all of those have codes. Now, a code is a rule for converting letters, words, phrases, or symbols into something meaningful. One reason for coding is to enable communication. So a code is very important to having information. That's one of the attributes or characteristics of information. Now, a second characteristic of information is something called meaning. Words have meaning, such as the word chair has meaning. Now, the word chair is not the physical thing, is it? But it represents something physical, therefore the word chair has meaning. That's what I mean by meaning. The word has meaning. The words space shuttle, the words space shuttle are not the physical thing, are they? But they represent the physical thing, so it has meaning. The word computer is not a physical thing, but it represents a physical thing, therefore it has meaning. The words Mike and Leslie Riddle are not the physical things, but they represent two physical people. That's what we mean by meaning. The words are not the real thing, but they represent the real thing. That's meaning. Meaning enables communication by associating words, phrases, or symbols to real objects. So we have code and we have meaning, two characteristics of information. Now what we are doing is building to a universal definition. Then we're going to apply that universal definition and come up with some very exciting conclusions. Remember our challenge now. What was our challenge? That we cannot defend against materialism. So I'm taking you on a little drive here now to the, to the conclusions. A third characteristic of information, expected action which is an implicit or explicit request or command for a given performance. Let me give you an example here. It's right before lunch, so you need this. Go to the grocery store and buy some chocolate chips. <clears throat> now, what is the expected action? The expected action is that someone will go to the grocery store and buy some chocolate chips. Whether that is carried out or not is irrelevant, but there is an expected action in information. So we have a code. We have a meaning and we have an expected action. And then the fourth characteristic is an intended purpose. An anticipated outcome or goal that is achieved by the performance of the expected actions. Let's take a look at that. Go to the grocery store and buy some chocolate chips. Now the expected action was somebody would go and buy the chocolate chips. But the intended purpose is to make chocolate chip cookies. Doesn't that sound good before lunch? Do you see the difference between the expected action and the intended purpose now? So here are our four attributes we have discovered about information. A code, meaning, expected action, and intended purpose. Those are the four attributes, and we call that our information domain. Those four things, remember when we got to a definition of a definition? We said you got to give very clear and precise, say what is included and what is not included. Well, here are the four things that are included with information. If any one of those is missing, then it's not going to be information based on the definition we're going to arrive at. So here's, here's how we arrived at all this. In July 2006, a team of scientists from around the world met to formulate what we call the universal definition of information. And it was based off of the work from Dr. Werner Gitt. And here was the team. 
We had a very diverse team. Very seldom will you ever see people from this cross disciplines coming together and agreeing on anything. But we achieved that. We spent a week, five days, enclosed in a room. And our purpose was to come up with this universal definition to see how powerful it would be against materialism. <laughs> so we had engineers, astrophysicists, geneticists, physiologists, molecular geneticists, chem chemists, 